everybody, how you doing? It's the car crazy guy here from, well, not so sunny Southern California. And today I have another video for you. And I'll go ahead and show you what I did here. Today I uh, installed this lighted bow tie. Now, on the factory lighted bow tie, it's only available in gold from Chevrolet. So what I had to do is a little modifications from the original bow tie to this lighted one. And what I actually did was take the lighted bow tie, once I got it, inside the house, and I stuck a feeler gauge right in between the clear opaque part and the gold part, which was what it was originally, slightly prying on it. It started to move. And I started getting excited. I said, oh, cool. I can get that uh, gold piece out. So once I start prying on it, I got enough of it out where I can get my finger underneath it and um, start prying a little bit more slowly. And it came out, you know, it was basically held in with two-phase adhesive. So on the original bow tie that was on this car, it had an accessory black non-lighted bow tie. What I did was I took that piece out of the car, real easy to do actually, and I'll show you how I did it. Um, once you got it out, there are six little mushrooms on the back. And when they, when they originally put it together, it has like six studs and it goes through the chrome piece and it has holes in it. And what they do is they heat it up and the, the plastic studs mushroom over the chrome piece. All I did was took a little pla you know, a little metal knife and went around those, uh, I'm gonna call them plastic welds until I was able to get the mushroom part out. And then the bow tie just literally just fell out of the housing. I took that bow tie and I test fit it into this one the lighted one and it actually fit but I couldn't really tell because the studs were still sticking out so I took a, a knife and I little by little I whittled them all down to the point where they're pretty much flat and then I put it inside this one and to my surprise it fit perfectly in other words it was literally the same part they used on the original one except this one is black so I took uh, adhesive which is 3M automotive adhesive Although the original one had the adhesive in the shape of the bow tie going all the way around it so there were no gaps, I, I couldn't duplicate that. So I put as much as I could around the perimeter and there's still gaps behind it. I guess dirt and water can get through and flow through the bottom where the other one would just get stuck on the top maybe, I don't know. And uh, I put it in, pushed it in and it stayed and it looks absolutely factory. And I didn't wrap it and that's what I was planning on doing originally is I bought wrap. I was gonna. I was going to do uh, vinyl wrap and I realized I'm not very good at it and I think I'm going to try my second idea which was this one and um, once I did that I, I soon realized it could be done and um, otherwise what you'd have to do is you'd have to buy a black bow tie kit which comes with the front and rear you could take your gold one off the rear put that one on in its place it's held in with adhesive onto the trunk um, and then take this one out and use the black insert and do exactly what I did. So I'll show you what I did. Let me go ahead and uh, cut to the next scene. Let me show you what I did. This particular bow tie that goes into the lighted piece is actually just held into the bow tie with this two-face adhesive. So using a feeler gauge, one of the thinner settings, I was able to get underneath it, pry, this bow tie, this yellow one, off of the lighted piece. Then I removed the bow tie off my car, was held in essentially just by, if you look at these little holes right here, and that one, and that one, that one, that one, and that one. That one blot. Yeah, I guess it left some of the plastic in there. Essentially what you do is you just get a, a, a knife and you just start carving out all of those pieces. Once you're done with that, you take this black bow tie that used to belong to here, and you basically whittle off the little nubs. You can see some of it right there. After you're done with that, you take the two-face adhesive and apply it to your black bow tie. And then essentially, you take the black bow tie, you set it right in there, stick it in place, and you've now created a black lighted bow tie that never even existed from GM's accessory department. So I'm gonna hang on to this little guy, because if I ever 
have problems with it, I can always put it back on. And um, I didn't want to wrap it. I did buy wrap for it, but I figured getting it into these little crevices is going to be tough. Cutting it cleanly will be tough. And nothing beats the factory look. So I've got a factory bow tie that's black into a factory lighted um, housing. And I'm going to mate the two together in a minute and I will show you what it looks like this evening. All right, we're back and it's the evening. And it seems to be pretty nice out because the clouds are now gone. But let's get back to what we uh, came out here for just so you can see it. I'll go ahead and uh, unlock the car and because of the uh, way it's wired up, it's hooked up to the parking lights and there she goes. Check it out, what do you think of that? I'm pretty happy with it, it looks pretty fantastic. And let me step away from the car here, kind of get a better look at it. It really does stand out really nicely. Zoom in on it again here for you. I like it, it looks really cool. Let me know what you think. Actually, once you get all that done, then you have to unplug, and this is where the headlight is right here, the, the actual original headlight plug is. You unplug the harness, which is that piece right there, that one with the red, you can see. You unplug it, you plug it into the harness that comes with the lighted bow tie, and then plug the other side of the harness back into the headlight. And then I routed the wiring, and it kind of, it's hard to see, but it goes kind of back in there and it goes literally comes under here and ends up of course right here now the way to get to it the instructions say to remove the bumper and quite frankly I think that's just too much trouble and in the process you might damage your bumper it's always possible and the, the edges of these bumpers and pretty much everything I've ever seen like in between the gaps are pretty fragile so you start ripping them out sometimes the paint chips off and you're gonna end up with another problem one that I personally don't care to visit. So what you do is you take out this piece. It's held in with this tab, this one, this one, and that one. And this dish just unsnaps off. Second thing you do is once you have this off, you can remove this. And that's the piece that goes to your, I guess your filler to the air box, your air, air scoop or whatever you want to call it. Um, once you have that out, there's another piece underneath I can't show you, but it's connected. To, this is what this is connected to, and it's held on with clips. And you did basically remove them. And I think I'm not mistaken. No, maybe I don't know if it's this one. I don't know if it's that one. But you'll know when you get it off because once you remove that, now you have complete access from this point to this point. It's totally clear. And there's a little shroud around here that I guess directs airflow into the radiator. And you can there's enough gap that the plug and wiring will slide in. Once you get it in, of course, the rest is easy. And after you, of course, you have the original bow tie out, uh, you had to drill a hole, and I think it was one and one eighth. I had one of those step bits, so it made it really easy. And there's an outline behind here. It looks like a little circle that's scribed. You just don't want to drill any bigger than that, because otherwise, if you go any bigger, you'll break the mounting points for the up and bottom part. Um, the rest is pretty simple. Didn't take too long to do it. I had a good time, but uh, had it all together and it looks fantastic. Now I have another video I made earlier and I'll go ahead and show you uh, in the house exactly what I did and how it looks when it was taken apart. I didn't show the actual video of me doing the work because I didn't honestly I didn't know how it was going to come out, but uh, it also I also have some pictures when it's lit because right now of course it's uh, it's not quite dark. But I'll turn, I'll turn it on, you just unlock the car, and it might not come on because it's too dark, too light outside. And as I suspected, nothing. So that was a fail. But uh, I do have some pictures of it that's when it's lit up, and I'll tell you, it looks pretty nice. I know it's a little gimmicky, and some people might say that's, that's cheesy. But you know, I think it's pretty neat. But it um, came out really nicely, and I'm pretty proud of my work. Because I didn't even know if it was going to happen. Now, this part from Chevy is $275, which is a lot of money. I found it on a website, and I can put the link in the description. And it was like $202. Shipped to my house was another $12. So it was $214. They didn't charge any sales tax. So it was a lot cheaper than going to the local dealer. Um, I was going to order it before, but I found out that they actually 
discontinued the part briefly. I guess it may it may have gone through another vendor, so they stopped. You know, they stopped. They took it off their website essentially on their accessory site, and um, I, I checked again. I found it. and I was like, you know. If I don't order this now, who knows what's going to happen? Because on the 2019s, the bow tie is larger, and they do make a black and gold version. So they might discontinue this one. Let's face it, they're discontinuing the whole line of Chevy Cruises after 2019. It's gone, and I just read online that they just built the last one at the Lordstown plant. So, yeah, this car may not be around much longer, and if you don't buy some of these obs uh, obscure accessories that are maybe not purchased all that much they might just discontinue them you'll never find one so anyways um, little update my headlight on this side the passenger side is a Diodynamics SL1 the fan is pretty noisy and when you tap on the housing not on right now but when you tap on it the sound kind of goes away and the motor but the motor sounds like it's slowed down like it stops spinning for a second so I contacted Headlight Revolutions which I highly recommend they, uh, they test headlights and practically every housing. Well, they, they, they didn't do this car, so I was kind of the guinea pig for it. But uh, great company, and I got it at the time when they were offering it at 20% off. So it was around 120, normally 150. Uh, wait till maybe 4th of July, they'll probably do another sale. You never know. So yeah, I've got a new one coming for that. And let's see if I can get that headlight on. And I'll kind of demonstrate. You know, like when you go to the doctor sometimes, I'll bet you it, it works fine. So let's see if I can get the headlight to come on. I think it's on. I'll shut the door. Okay. It is on. That's the normal one. Not very loud, but when you come over here, you can hear that. Now watch when I tap on the headlight. Actually, it's not doing it right now. It's a little quieter, but before when you're tapping on it, it was making, it, it kind of changed pitch and it sounded like the motor stopped working. So now we can actually see barely what it looks like lit. And you can see it more when you look from the top. But too light outside to really actually see it but I have I have some pictures of it so anyways that's my uh, latest modification and the last thing to happen is my uh, driver's side tire on the left started going low so I brought it in they took it apart put it back together it looked like it was doing the same thing so we had them dismounted and remount it and I think it's okay now so Pretty much that's it on this car, but I think it's looking pretty good now. And I said in the other videos, hey, this is nothing to get excited about. It's just a cheap economy car, but I think I've got it dressed up pretty nicely. I think it looks pretty good. For a, you know, for literally a $17,000 car, I probably put into it maybe $1,800 of stuff. You know, I saved so much money off the sticker that you know, I put a little money back into it, but I ended up with something that was pretty nice for the money. Um, maybe if I keep this car long enough and the warranty runs out, maybe a tune might be in order. So we'll see. It's, it's not bad for what it is. It's certainly not fast, but it, it keeps up with traffic and uh, a lot quicker than some of the cars in the class. You know, you've got 153 horsepower, 177 foot-pounds of torque. So it's pretty decent. You see that flickering? to the naked eye it is not doing that but uh, I like it let me know what you think in the comments below I don't know how much more I don't think there's many things I could do to this car except maybe adding a fog light kit uh, that would definitely require removing the bumper because apparently the uh, washer fluid bottle is in the way they it comes with a new one that's smaller I don't think I could get away with uh, not taking it off because you have to remove the inserts in that blank area down below. So we'll see. Anyways, you guys have a good one. It's the car crazy guy here from Santa Clarita. And I will see you on the next one. And I think the next one will probably be a Corvette video. I really haven't done enough of those. You know, just uh, at the very, very beginning and uh, everything's been fine with it. I haven't driven it too much, but uh, I will, as soon as this weather kind of turns sunny, 
hoping this week that happens and uh, I'll have it out and I'll show you what, uh, what it looks like in a little more in depth. Take her easy. Oh, 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 o